original sin defined. Now, lest my remarks appear too offhand, it will be necessary to define original sin. My intention is not, however, to consider all the definitions advanced by those who have written about it. I will give one definition only, which I believe conforms to the truth. We therefore affirm that original sin is a hereditary corruption and perversion of our nature, which in the first place renders us guilty of God's wrath, and in the second produces in us those works which scripture calls works of the flesh. These are, strictly speaking, what Paul often calls sin, but without the qualification original. The works to which it gives rise, adultery, licentiousness, theft, hatred, murder, and gluttony, are for this reason called fruits of sin, although all such works are termed sin in Scripture. There are two points which we must examine separately. First, that we are so corrupt in every part of our nature that on account of our corruption we are justly condemned in God's sight. Righteousness, blamelessness and purity alone are acceptable to him. We cannot explain our liability merely as someone else's fault, as if we were being held accountable for the sin of our first father while being ourselves blameless. For although scripture declares that through Adam we are made answerable to God's judgment, this does not mean that we are innocent and that without having deserved punishment we are paying an exorbitant price for his sin. But because through his transgression we are all caught up in his ruin, he is said to have made us all liable. Yet we must not think that he exposed us only to punishment without imparting his sin to us. In truth, the sin which came from him dwells within us, and for it, punishment is due. Thus Augustine, although he sometimes calls it the sin of another, so as to show more clearly that it is ours by racial descent, affirms that it belongs to each one of us. The apostle also bears witness that death came upon all men, because all have sinned. That is, all are entangled in original sin and are tainted by its stain. For this reason, condemnation extends to children too, not only because of another's sin, but because of their own. For although they have not yet brought forth the fruit of their iniquity, they have within them its hidden seed. Moreover, their nature is itself a seed of sin, and thus can only be displeasing and abhorrent to God. The second point we must consider is that this perversion of our nature is never passive in us, but continually produces new fruit, the works of the flesh to which we referred earlier. In the same way, a fiery furnace always spews out flames and sparks, or a spring gives forth water. Thus, those who have defined original sin as a lack of original righteousness have, in this phrase, captured its substance, but have not adequately expressed its full force. For our nature is not only void and destitute of all good, it is so fertile in every kind of evil that it can never be idle. Those who have called original sin lost have not employed too outlandish a term, provided we add what many are not disposed to allow, namely that all parts of man, from the mind to the will, from the soul to the flesh, are defiled and filled with just such lust. Or to put it more briefly, man is in himself nothing but lust. <laughs>